Thanks for coming, everybody. Um, so I'm Lucas Munson. I'm Jack Cox. Uh, we're from Minneapolis-St. Paul area. We're part of the Twin Cities Comic Collective. Um, we're a, gr a group of uh, local independent comic creators, and you are here to listen to us kind of talk about our experiences um, over the last few years uh, creating our comics and getting them out into the world. So, you guys uh, having a good time out here? Yeah. Cool. Awesome. It's been an awesome convention so far. Sure. I really like it out here. So, yeah. Thanks for coming, guys. Mm -hmm. So our project is called Siamese. And uh, it's kind of a post-apocalyptic sci-fi story. Uh, I wrote the script in 2010 and uh, finished in 2011. Mm -hmm. And um, first met Jack in 2011 at a convention uh, in Minneapolis, yeah. SpringCon. And uh, ever since then, we've been working together on the project. We have uh, our fourth issue in production right now, and that'll complete the series. And we should have that done uh, by the beginning of May. And then we're going to be putting it out in a trade after that. Um, so we've had uh, quite a few years of experience kind of working together. Um, I also work on, I've got uh, four other books in publication right now, uh, in production I should say. And um, so we've got a fair amount of experience doing the independent comic thing and hopefully um, you'll, you'll get some use out of that knowledge. Yeah, what we're providing is basically just a framework that we like to use and through trial and error this is what we found have been really good. We know that there isn't really a right way to do this, but I mean, this is just what worked for us. So I hope this helps. Mm -hmm. So we figure you guys are all here because you have a great story in your head that you would like to turn into a comic book. And uh, a lot of times at these conventions, we hear from a lot of people that uh, you know ask us, how, how, did you, how did you do this? I don't know what to do. And so we kind of thought this would be a great opportunity for people to have a good idea that don't know what to do next, um, this could be helpful. So that's what our goal is. Um, Just the fact that you guys are here is great too. Absolutely. I mean, any of these conventions, uh, I know that there aren't a ton in Madison too, but there are plenty all around the Midwest nearby. Um, it's just one step more if you guys want to actually like put together a story at all. Um, meeting people is definitely the first step in actually making something good, so yeah. So today we're gonna kind of focus on four parts, um, four kind of categories of advice we've got for you. And then at the end, we'd like to keep at least 15 or so minutes for the questions that you guys have um, relating to any of this or relating to anything that you're working on. Uh, hopefully, uh, we'll stay on time for you guys. You can get back to, uh, back to the show. So to start out, um, we're gonna kind of focus on the project that you've got in mind from yourself independently. Um, the number one piece of advice that you can get from this entire presentation is that you, you absolutely have to work. Yeah. Uh, in the immortal words of RuPaul, you better work. Uh, <laughs> if you aren't going to put in the time and do the work, you're never going to have a comic book. Um, and I think you'll hear us say this over and over today, um, something related to it, that you have to put in the work if you mm -hmm. want to make a comic book. And yeah, it's just something that like a lot of people would when they're working through with a project, they'd like to know when it gets easier. It really doesn't. It really is about like how much time you put into it, it's what you want to dedicate to it, and it'll turn into something great if that's the case. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I know for myself, so I've been uh, writing comics for just about five years now, and um, when I decided I wanted to dive into that, I really didn't know exactly what to do. I didn't really know what that looked like. And so to start out, um, We've got a list of some of the books that have been really helpful for us and some of the other guys in our group, the TC3, that have really helped uh, give us an understanding of what exactly we need to do to put the pieces together to make the comic book. Um, for me, a big one was Alan Moore's Writing for Comics. Yeah. Um, it's not very long, and it comes in kind of a, a really thin trade paperback. And it, it's a little dated. He wrote it uh, maybe in the late 80s, I they think. They were in periodicals, too. Yeah. They're a collection of, uh, you know... Uh, articles that he written in a newspaper and it's collected now into a book. Um, and it definitely, it, uh, the heart of the advice in that thing is just so invaluable to somebody that's doing writing. Um, mm -hmm. That's absolutely number one if you're doing writing. Yeah, it's a, it's a book that really talks about how unique the form of comics is rather than like if you were writing for prose or if you were writing for a movie. It really takes into effect like how you can utilize page turns, um, panels, uh, really how you progress a story from a, one time into another. And um, I'm an artist, and I think it helped me greatly in understanding like how to read from a script. So 
it's one that I'd really go for, and Alan Moore is just kind of, you know, he's a name that I'm sure a lot of people would like mm -hmm. to know. And, and so the next ones are kind of more of the overview of yeah. uh, like art for comics, but mm -hmm. even still, these are books that I've gotten some, some good use out of too in knowing what an artist is expecting uh, mm -hmm. in a script or what exactly their process is gonna be. Um, so Understanding Comics by Scott McCloud. Yeah, that was one of the first books that really made me look at comics as like an art form itself. I know that I've seen um, you know, before then, I was probably, I read it when I was about 13. And from then, I, you know, they're just pages that are really cool. They look like animation. They're really fun and colorful to look at. But uh, Scott McCloud is one of the best comic theorists out there. Um, he's actually coming out with a new comic book, too, which I'm really excited about. But um, understanding comics is about understanding um, just the art form of comics. It's about understanding how time works in comics. It's about how understanding how you know, you read images and then you write pictures. I mean, there's, it, it's a, there's a very homogenous blend between these. Um, and yeah, I think he wrote that, he wrote that around like 2002. Um, and he has another one called Making Comics, which is a little more specific on like actually working on your craft. Um, but Scott McCloud is uh, a number one uh, pick for me in case I had to mention an influence, so. The next two, uh, there's DC Comics Guide 2 and Artists or Writers on Comic Art. There are a couple of series that have mm -hmm. like specific entries on certain pieces if you yeah. really want to get into you know, just doing inking or just doing you know, coloring or, or whatever it is that you feel drawn to. Um, these books will focus on specific issues that you might um, you know, like to look at, um, and they can be really helpful. I know the Artists and Writers on Comics Art series is out of print, but you might be able to find like half-price books or eBay or something like that. There's the internet too. Um, yeah, and these are resources that we just want to provide for you guys because it is incredibly important to um, do your research and make sure you get a good idea of what you're getting into. Um, not just your favorite books, but really looking into your understanding the theory, understanding your craft um, before you really dive into it. And I mean, while you're diving into it too. Absolutely. You, want to, yeah, I mean, you should always to. be working like while you're like actually researching these. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's always important. And we, this isn't exactly a how to make comics um, panel. We just really wanted to talk about like, you know, utilizing influences, utilizing research, because um, that's the first step in making a good partnership and a good work. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So one of the, the big things that I think everyone in our collective, I mean, we've got 13 guys and gals in the group, and you know, we all treat comics as our job. Uh, you're probably not going to start out by making a bunch of money doing this. Um, hopefully, eventually you will. But yeah. <laughs> if you want to do comics as a career, you've got to treat it like a job in addition to the job that you have to pay the bills. Right. You have to show up to work five or six times a week. You need to sit there and do work for three or four or five or six or however many hours a time yeah. you, know, you can do it. But you have to make it a repetitive process. For writers... I haven't, I can't even tell you the number of really successful authors that just always say, you need to write every day, you need to write all the time. If you're not writing every day and reading all the time, you're just not going to be able to do it. It's a craft and you have to perfect it. And the same goes for drawing. Yeah. Um, our friend Jeff, who's in our group, says you got 20,000 lousy drawings in you, you got to get them all out before you start pumping out the good ones. So you got to treat it like a job if you want to make it your career. Um, and it's hard work. You got to do it all the time, and you got to figure out the schedule that works for you. Uh, I have a small son. I start working when he goes to bed around eleven o'clock at night. He's crazy and he's a night owl, but that's how it happens. Uh, and then I work until two or three in the morning. I go to bed and do it all over again the next day because I'm passionate about it. And it's what I want to do. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, and if you have a day job, it's no excuse. Like, <laughs> I I think in the last year I worked at a liquor store up in Hennepin Lake. Um, and I kept on having to rhyme, remind myself. And like, it's always really important for you to like, just write reminders to yourself, you know? Like, if you have a workspace, you know, whatever it may be, um, write notes that you'll see often. Like, you could say, my job is a clerk in a liquor store, but my profession is a comic book artist. Mm -hmm. um, you don't have to think of your, uh, you don't have to list yourself as you know, something that you just want to get by through. You're just making the means. Um, 
Yeah, that was something that was really important for me when I was working on the second book because at that point, uh, while working on Siamese, um, I really had to I really had to focus on what I was doing because I was a year out of college, and I didn't have the support as much as I needed, um, or what I was used to uh, from school, and. Uh, yeah, it's just something that you really need to remind yourself always. So that's my take on it. So um, the next key piece of advice for you as an individual um, in honing your craft is you need to be consistently consistent. And what we mean by that is that you always have to pump out good stuff all the time. Um, you may be awesome at drawing one thing, but if that's the only thing that you can draw, and you can't get through anything else, you're not being consistently consistent. You're not always being good at what you do for everything you're doing. So be sure that what it is you're trying to do, all pieces of it are consistent with what you can do. Um, don't put in any kind of stuff that you just tried to kind of shove off to the side or whatever. It's got to be good stuff all the time. And um, always... Uh, challenge yourself to put your best stuff out there and make sure that you're, you know, everything you're bringing to whomever it is you might want to work with is consistently good. It's consistently representative of what you can do. Um, people are going to see immediately if there's a weak point in what you're doing and that's going to, you know, sour chances. So just make sure that you're always putting out your very best foot uh, in every facet of what it is that you're working on. Right. So, like, for a writer you're going to want to look back um, on a character's speech and make sure that they're using the right kind of dialogue and they're not sounding like another character in your script. Mm -hmm. For, I mean, if you're working on a portfolio as an artist, you're going to want to make sure you're hitting a lot of different notes in your portfolio. You're going to want to make sure, if you are trying to work on a project as an artist, like you keep a character bible of like, you know, how a character looks from like a turn a lot of animation uh, does this too. They have uh, character turns where they go from the side, the front, the back. Um, make sure you're getting the costume right. Make sure that if you have one scene, you are drawing a building facing one way and then and the other one is facing the other side. If there's anything that we know about comic book geeks is that we all are very specific about details and we're going to spot the times when they go, oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Discontinuity, oh. Yeah. So make sure that you're paying attention to that stuff because it's important. Mm -hmm. Um, another key thing is finding people that are going to give you honest feedback. You could give your script to your wife or your mom or your whoever, and they're going to go, oh, that's nice. You did a great job. I really like it. But they say you can't use those people. Right, yeah. And, and if you know that they'll tell you the truth when there's something off or if you could work on something or if you need to, you know, try to strengthen this piece of whatever it is you're working on, then use them as a resource. But make sure that they're giving you honest feedback and ask for feedback that is critical because um, if everybody's just telling you your stuff is great all the time um, but they're not trying to challenge you to make it better um, again the people that you show this stuff to are going to be critical of what you're doing you want to make sure that you're, you're showing a good product yeah see it through different eyes because um, different eyes are what you know is going to see the final project in the first place I mean once you finish a, a work it's not just you looking at it so make sure that um, any other eyes who see it like are able to tell you like what is wrong or what they think is great, you know. Um, and then the last piece of this is um, make sure you're bringing like finished and quality work to conventions. So if you're bringing a portfolio, make sure you bring your best stuff. Take out those things that you're, you're feeling a little shaky about or you're not sure. Um, for a script, make sure that it's, it's a finished chapter or a finished piece or, yeah. you know, a really solid synopsis or whatever it is you want to show yeah. off. Make sure that you're bringing something that you know looks like a finished product of some kind, um, just to give a good representation of what it is that you're trying to show people. If you want to respect a writer or an artist, if you want to show that stuff around, um, keep in mind that's the same kind of mentality that a lot of high-end publishers are going to want. They're going to want fully completed works uh, before they actually make any assessment on it. You could have like a couple sketches. You could have like maybe. I don't know, a few smatterings and outline of the work, but they're going to want to see what the project would look like if it was published. So um, more than just their idea, this is the product. So uh, once you've got kind of the piece that you um, are happy to show off, 
Um, you got to find somebody that you want to work with. And you got to find somebody that's going to be a good partner for what it is that you're doing. Um, one of the key pieces is that you've got to find somebody that wants to make your project their project, a passion project. You're passionate about what it is that you're doing for the project. You've got to find somebody else that wants to be passionate about it too. Um, and so that can be that can be tricky. Um, but you know, if you find somebody that's got a lot of similar interests and um, you know seems to like the same movies or books or comics that you like, um, you know, you've got enough overlap and you kind of have a similar vision on what it is you're trying to do, um, that's super important uh, for a true collaborative effort to make a piece, a group project. You've got to have everybody be passionate about the project. Yeah. I mean, this could be, this could be, you know, just a friend of yours that's really good at drawing or really good at writing at the same time. But maybe you really want to look out there, check out your options. You bring it to people who... You know, you would go to someone's table or you just meet someone at a convention like, hey, I happen to see you're carrying a portfolio or whatever. You know, just engage in a brief conversation and check it out. Like, see what they like. Um, I'm just going to bring up, like, our influences, like, for what we like about Siamese. We uh, kept talking about how much we love, like, you know, 90s hard grunge sci-fi or something like that. We really like The Matrix and Blade all those Runner. kinds of things. Yeah. Blade Runner. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, like, those were things that we connected on, and we understood each other. Um, we understood each other, uh, and we were able to make something uh, that fit together with both of our visions. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, we've already told you that you've got to bring representative samples of what it is that you are capable of. You want to make sure that if you're presenting your project to somebody and you're kind of thinking about working with them, make sure that you're seeing their representative examples. Mm -hmm. Make sure that they can do, you know, a series of pages that have a continuity um, if you're a writer. Or, you know, if you're the illustrator, make sure that you are seeing, uh, you know, a full chapter or a full script yeah. um, to make sure that this person can actually do what it is that you are hoping they're going to do for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, when you're looking at, you know, an artist, make sure that they're not, like... It's, it's great if they're a fantastic illustrator, but if they can't make um, a good story out of panels or um, just a good sequential amount of work, you might run into troubles because that could be something that, like, they're still learning on themselves. And, you know, I mean, like, we all are learning through this at the same time. Like, if you're working on a passion project, you're going to get a lot of education out of it just based on your own. Um, so make sure, but I mean, make sure that they actually are interested in um, wanting to make something uh, very well-rounded, you know, for a writer. It's making sure that, like, if you see something that's just a really cool description and it's kind of like real smatterings of dialogue everywhere, like, you know, uh, judge it appropriately is all we want. So, yeah. Um, a big thing in a partnership is that, and, and especially if you're going to want to make a comic book or a series or something together, um, you have to treat it like a partnership and not a paycheck. So, for instance, um, as, the, as the author, um, I didn't want to give my script to somebody who's going to charge me 70 bucks a page and then I end up with the world's most expensive one-off comic book. You know, I needed to find somebody that was willing to be in it for the long run with me to make it a complete project. Um, you, can't, you can't think of it as um, you know, just an easy way to make some money if it's going to be your passion project. You've got to be all in it as a team. Yeah, I mean, as an artist, you guys are, I mean, in any profession, you always want to get paid, of course. And, like, that's something that, when I was in school, it was incredibly stressed. And it is incredibly important that you're not working just for promotion. You're not working just because it's good exposure. But um, what we're talking about is a very different kind of um, partnership. It's a very different kind of work that we want. Um, if we want to make good stuff, uh, we have to work hard and we have to uh, work around money because it's so difficult in this saturated environment. Um, so, yeah, I mean, put your best foot forward, like step in for like your partner and stuff like that, and they'll step in for you too. Mm -hmm. So, um, I mean, it helps when you, you know, lean on each other. So. And that kind of piggybacks into the next piece here is make sure you're on the same page. Make sure that you have the same kind of goals. Um, that you know where you're trying to go, where you are right now. Um, 
you know, just having that conversation that you are both having the same expectations. Mm -hmm. And that goes right into, you know, agree on accountability and goals. Right on. Um, make sure that you know when you want things to be, to be done by and make sure you're hitting those timelines. Um, you know, you promise somebody 30 pages by October 15th and you don't have it until November 15th. That's not going to be a very successful experience. Um, you know, it, it's got to be a two-way street that both are accountable um, and that it's realistic goals that you're setting yeah. and that you're upfront with each other about what it is you're going to be able to do and what you're going to be able to do. And on those two points, um, what we can't stress more is that if you are um, going to be doing this, you have to be meeting very often. Mm -hmm. You have to be meeting very, very often. Like, um, we try to talk to each other about revisions, like what we're working on with pages, um, almost, almost every other week. You know, I mean, we're, we engage in, you know, we talk on Facebook quite a bit about the projects. Um, we show each other work that we just did. Um, we make sure that, uh, you know, our partner would have eyes on what we're doing as well. And uh, we'd expect likewise. And of course, you don't have to be like physically in the same room. You know, no. if you find a, a guy that wants to do your work with you, it's a roommate. You know, that's across awesome. The, <laughs> right. Yeah. But if if they live across the country, you can still do that. You know, you got Skype, you got email, you got all sorts of things. You know, at your fingertips to Plethora. be able to um, still talk frequently and make sure that you're you know seeing each other's progress on on everything frequently. Mm -hmm. um, so we talked about. From a personal perspective, being consistently consistent, it goes the same for you as a team. Uh, make sure that you're both putting your best foot forward on everything you're putting out there. People will be judging your work and your work ethic. That's no doubt. And it is judgment <laughs> because they don't know who you are. They don't know that you have good intentions. They don't know what it is you're trying to do. All they've got in front of them is your product. And, you know, when it comes time that you're wanting to, you know, pitch your project to a publisher... And they're asking for, you know, a completed scene. Um, you need to make sure that you're consistent on that. But mm -hmm. then if it gets picked up or somebody wants to work with you, you have to make sure that you're realistic with what you can get done and be consistent with that. Because if you promise somebody something and you burn them, it's going to be really hard to find other doors that are open for you. Yeah. And I mean, like, if you know that people are judging your work, like have them be vocal about it. Like, that's what we were talking about before with being honest and being with in critiques. Like, you're going to want to know these things. You're going to want to step outside of your comfort level, and you're going to want to have to accept that there is something that you're trying not to see on your page. Um, so, yeah, I mean, like, when we're talking about being a consistently consistent team, um, making sure that you uh, are agreeable on, like, when you're working with finances, like how you're splitting those, um, be accountable for like timelines, be accountable for, um, you know, just showing each other work and just like having a good conversation about the work too. Like I really think it would be cool if it would go like this. Um, well, I mean, it goes back to making it your job too. I mean, if you show is. up to work and you're, you give your boss a bunch of garbage, you're not going to keep your job for very long. So yeah. you want to make sure that if it, you know, if this is going to be your career that you have to do a good job at it. Mm -hmm. so. um, you definitely have to be open to a partner's suggestions and feedback. Um, I can't think of how many times throughout the different series that I'm working on, my illustrator has an idea on something, and I go, oh, I hadn't thought of that. How would we do that? What would it look like? And um, it ends up being really great because they've got ideas you don't have. Um, sometimes you might not always agree on things, and you can explain, you know, oh, this is kind of how I saw it, and they go, oh, I didn't see it like that. You know, so it's a conversation. But... Remember that it's a partnership. It's not an insular thing. You can't mm -hmm. just do everything on your own. Um, if, if you could, you know, then you could do it on your own. But yeah. if you want to have a partnership, um, make sure it is a, an equal partnership with open conversation. Make sure you're being honest with your partner and yeah. make sure that they're being honest with you. Um, and it's just going to help out so much and always come to an agreement on anything like that, like any sort of decision that you guys are talking about. Mm -hmm. Don't just leave it up like, well, okay, I guess I'll do that. Well, and challenge them to be their best, you know, because, yeah. again, you want, you want your partnership to be the best work that you can do. And if you see something, you go, you know, I don't want to hurt their feelings or whatever. No, no, you got to be honest. Um, mm -hmm. you, you know, provide that honest feedback. Be nice about it, but, you know, make sure that you're giving them honest, good feedback so that you're both getting better. Yeah. Um, we also want to make sure that you, you know, consider taking chances and moving out of your comfort zone. 
um, I can't think of how many opportunities we've run into by doing something that we hadn't done before. Um, you know, sometimes being an artist is a very um, kind of an individualized experience. You know, you're most comfortable doing your own thing on your own. But, um, you know, getting outside of that comfort zone opens up doors, uh, gives you opportunities. I mean, um, you know, we've never done a panel before. This is our first panel. So thanks for coming. Yeah. But, you know, uh, I'm, I'm it, it's being open to all these opportunities, you know, oh, well, I, we got an idea for a panel, let's, let's talk to them about it. And they go, yeah, all right, great. Um, it, it just gives you so many chances to do something you've never done before and, you know, build your experience and... Put yourself in different shoes, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's kind of it. Like, and once you get up to a certain point, like, you know, you're going to want to set goals for, hey, like, this is our first chapter or something like that. We got our first chapter done. Um, like, you guys agreed to a certain goal. You guys agreed to a certain time. And now you have something that's like, you know, it's a piece of a product. Well, you got to, I mean, you got to go to conventions. You got to sign up for a table. You got to try to look for it ahead of time because it takes a long time to sign up for these two. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, take chances. Uh, we took a chance with Wizard World um, in Minneapolis, and it turned out great. Madison is proving almost equally as good. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, it's, it's been a fun time. Um, and So, yeah, you'll, you'll make mis mistakes. Yeah. Getting outside of your comfort zone, you don't always know what you're doing, and you're going to do something that, oh, man, I would have done that differently or whatever. But those are the most valuable opportunities for learning. you got to make mistakes. Absolutely. <laughs> um, and you will, and that's great, because that means you're trying things you haven't done before, and you're going to get better at what you're doing, and you're going to figure things out, and mm -hmm. you're going to figure out, you know, your best way to do things, and... That's what it's all about. Yeah. Make good mistakes and then treat them as stepping stones. Yeah. You know, I mean, you're just going to, like, walk over them, and you're going to know that they're there. Don't ever, like, step on the same spot again, <laughs> you know. Yeah. So learn from them, of Watch course. the pitfalls. <laughs> uh, a big thing for us, you know, is being a part of the Twin Cities Comic Collective is finding other people in our area that are doing the same things we're doing and then learning from them and um, being challenged by them and being held accountable by them. If you can find yourself a creative community of other people that are doing similar things as you, they are just like your partner is going to be doing for you. Um, I think I see a creative community right here too. <laughs> so you guys should all talk to each other probably yeah. after. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, you've got uh, you know, two dozen people here that are probably in the same boat as you. Mm -hmm. um, talk to these folks. Yeah. But, you know, it wasn't... It was at conventions where we met other people that were doing similar projects. We sat next to a couple of guys that were doing a project that was kind of similar to ours, and we're like, oh, man, we're by these guys. Yeah. How are we going to differentiate ourselves? But we ended was... up kind of working as a team, and mm -hmm. it was a, one of the best uh, experiences of, of table mates that we've ever had. Yeah. It was a writer's... It was a right, right, writer's... A writer-artist pair, um, just like ours, and uh, they both had a dystopian future... Um, story and Just we were like, like uh, a <laughs> little worried that we're sitting next to these guys <laughs> but guess what they were thinking just like us so we were able to talk to them um, and we had a lot of the same interests and we thought the same so and um, now they're they're part of our TC3 group as exactly well, so. yeah so I mean like I mean if you see a project that's really similar to yours like don't ever get discouraged by that whatsoever um, I mean yeah, if you happen to see Vikings in space, uh, your your comic is about Vikings in space, and you happen to see someone else who did that's a Viking in space comic. <laughs> Think about talking to them. You know, like where they come from. Like figure out the project. You know, well, like they're probably out, cool people. You'll figure out a way that yours is you know differentiated. Of course. I mean, how many yeah. times have you seen kind of the same? That's movie just fiction in general. A hundred times, but yeah. they do something different. So. Uh -huh. so, uh, and then once you know, once you've kind of been at it for a while, uh, and you're having some successes. You know, reach out to people that could use some help or some guidance. Um, if you're at a convention and people are coming up to you and asking you questions about your process or whatever, be gracious and talk to those people and help them out because you were once where, you know, they are now. So, um, you know, be a resource and, uh, you know, just help, help each other out. Mm -hmm. uh, once you've got your, your book project completed, um, you're going to need to do something with it. You want to show it around? Hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> Um, printing is probably one of the, the biggest difficulties I think that we've run into. We we seem to keep trying printers and we're it's an adventure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're not really happy with uh, the quality, or we're not really happy with the price, or we're not really happy with the turnaround. It's tough to find a good printer 
And part of it is because you're probably not going to be printing 10,000 copies of your first book. Uh, if you were, you go to an offset printer and they give you a great price. You sure. get a book for under a dollar and, you know, great. But if you're doing it in small runs, oftentimes you're going to find guys that are going to quote you three, three fifty, four dollars $4 per book. That's too much. Um, so keep looking. Um, but, you know, you're going to have to do a lot of work because these printers aren't necessarily advertising a whole lot or they're not advertising for comic books. Yeah. So this is a, this is a, a surprisingly tricky piece of this puzzle. Mm-hmm. Um, but keep looking. Um, most of the times, you know, in a small print quantity now, we've been able to get, you know, prices down to a little under $2 a piece. And I think that would be a yeah. you know pretty good for a run of fifty or hundred if you can get them down to a dollar seventy five or something. That's a pretty realistic <laughs> price for a like a thirty page yeah. comic. So yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, don't get discouraged by having a hard time finding printing, and um, don't think that you've got to ship them out to China and buy five thousand copies of something. Um, there are a lot of local printers. I'm sure you'll find, and they might be kind of hiding. But yeah, keep they're more than likely. There's a lot of them from where you guys are around. Like, mm-hmm. always look into that. Like, you know, it's a printing company. Maybe it doesn't have the best graphic design for their sign, but they are a printing company. Yeah. So, and maybe they just don't print for comics, but they're really great for comics. Yeah. So, figure it out. Um, uh, getting your work out there, too, it doesn't just have to be a comic book. Um, if you're used to reading comics, you know, you can always think about web comics. We have a couple of guys in our group that have been really successful doing web comics. Yep. Um, thinking about maybe putting out a page a week or something online and having people follow that progress mm-hmm. or putting out chapters online or if you know you for Siamese when I wrote it I really considered it to be a graphic novel I didn't really think about splitting it up at all I hadn't written chapter breaks but our real goal was to try to meet up with certain conventions because we thought those were great deadlines to meet and it kept us working on the project so that's why we split it up in this, into four chapters so. so, yeah, if you're, you know, again, if you're real, you know, hyper-focused on one thing, you know, that might not always be your best option. So kind of consider unconventional, you know, methods of getting your work out there. Mm-hmm. Um, for marketing, just hit everything. You know, if you don't like Facebook, well, sorry, a lot of people like Facebook, so get on Facebook. You don't like Twitter, sorry, get on Twitter. A lot of people are on there. If you don't do Instagram, well, start do it Instagram. up. <laughs> These are all free ways of you, you know, getting your work out there. And be consistent with, you know, your posts. Posting, yeah. If you post once every three months, nobody's going to see those things. No. Nobody's going to notice that. But if you're posting, you know, once or twice a week and you've got new content all the time, people are going to follow you and they're going to go, oh, yeah, I want to see what they're doing now. Yeah. Um, so make sure that you are marketing yourself. Um, it depends, like, I'm sure some of you guys might be very well-versed in social media but just what I've realized from a lot of um, my peers working on stuff is that like they've worked with a lot of different websites like Tumblr, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and all of this. Well, I mean, they all tried it at first, and then they found one that like, wow, they, we're getting a lot of hits here, so I'm really going to focus on that. So find out which platform is best for you. You know, like you're going to throw out a lot of fishing lines, and if you get a snag on one, you better focus on it real hard. So don't give the other ones up. Of yeah. course, but you know, they're always different what's working for you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then conventions is I mean, that's so important to mm-hmm. get a table at a convention with your product. Yeah. Um, the guy who writes Walking Dead, Kirkman, he says that if you're gonna make it, you have to go to a minimum of ten conventions a year. Go outside of your area, uh, you know, don't just focus on your metropolitan area. Um, obviously hit those local cons, hit the smaller cons, get your name out there, figure out which ones are good, figure out which ones you get good sales at, um, but, you know, branch out. So we're from Minneapolis, we're here in Madison because we're branching out, um, and we're trying to, you know, grow our audience, and, um, you know, conventions are the number one most important thing yeah. to get your project out there and get people to know about it. Mm-hmm. For sure. And then your local comic book shops. Um, I, I Wherever live, they may be. Yeah, yeah I live um, pretty close to mine, just a, a few miles away, and I go in every week and I buy my comics and I make sure to talk to the guys that work there and become friends with those guys. Mm-hmm. And they know my name and I know their names. And when it came time to put my books in their store, they're like, yeah, Lucas, awesome, man. I didn't know you did comics. That's awesome. Yeah, we'll carry them for you, no problem. And thanks, guys. Cool. Um, they are going to be, you know, um, champions for you. Uh, mm-hmm. They want... They love comics. They want to see other people that love comics to do well. And they want to represent the local community. Absolutely, too. yeah. So, um, yeah. And if they don't have a local section, talk to them about, hey, have you guys ever thought about doing a local section? 
And if they do have a local section, say, hey, do you ever put new local comics on the new release wall when those books mm-hmm. come out? Um, Sometimes you know, they're even creators, too. Yeah, The yeah. people who own the stores. Yeah. So those guys are going to be friends to your, your process. Make sure you get to know those guys. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, last piece of advice, like Jack kind of said earlier, you know, don't follow us word for word. If you're finding success on something, you know, go for it. Yeah. You guys are all creative. You can figure things out. Just be creative and, and try new things and figure out what works best for you. Um, but, you know, kind of based on our experiences, this is what's worked for us. You might find other things that work for you. There is no scientific model to this, and that's one thing that we just want to stress more than anything else. So um, this, these are the mistakes and these are the successions that we've had. Um, and they're what we like about how we work with this mm-hmm. project. Um, and just another thing too, like just want to stress again, it really is all about the work. Um, I mean, you might, I mean, like if you really love this, and you really like want to work with a cool project, you want to work on a passion project, you've got to remind yourself that it really is all about the work. And you can't, you can't think about, well, well, you know, there's no one around me. Or, well, I might be too old for this. Or, yeah. well, you know. I don't know how to do this. Really. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, it, you can't doubt yourself. Yeah. Like, if you, stop, if you do that, you're going to stop working. <laughs> I yeah. mean, that's the only thing. Sure. And you're just going to always keep on going up that ladder, you know, the next rung. So, yeah. Keep yeah. at it. Mm-hmm. And good luck with your with your projects. So we wanted to spend a lot of time right now just for questions because um, we really wanted to see if we can help any of you guys out. Um, so yeah, anything. I think we've got about ten minutes, and if anybody has any questions, whatever. yeah, anything they want to mention up with about you know if they have an own, if their own project um, where they can go from here. So yeah, anything. Mm-hmm. Sure. So the question is, how do you know when you've got a good idea and which one should you pick? Mm-hmm. Um, I've got a, a really good buddy named Josh, and he doesn't really do comics. Like, he doesn't read them, he doesn't pay attention to them at all, but he's a good friend of mine, and he likes a good story. And he is the first guy I'll go to when I've got a new idea. And I know that he'll be honest with me, and um, he'll be a patient audience, so I'll kind of, I'll get my idea kind of outlined in my head, and I'll kind of tell it to him like a story. Mm-hmm. And he'll ask me questions about it, and he'll, you know, be polite to listen, and he'll go, wow, man, that's a really awesome story. I love that story. I'd love to see that. Yeah. Um, find somebody that you can talk to about your ideas and see if, you know, there's one that they, um, you know, really, that really resonates with them, or, you know, a couple of your yep. friends or something would be a good idea. Definitely find uh, people to confide in about, like, these projects, like, you know, what, what is working, what isn't. Um, if you've got a lot of ideas, you know, um, write them all down. <laughs> like just actually yeah. like just write each topic down. And more than often, you'll notice that at least like I don't know if you've got like thirty, five of them might be very similar to each other. <laughs> and you know, I mean, that's just how it is. Um, and then you can just be like, oh, well, that would make a great story then if it, if I combine sure this I've, element, you know. Yeah, I've done that before. But yeah, I mean, like and. What we were stressing with before is that um, when another factor in making this decision is find the one that is going to be complete. Find the one that yeah. you don't like. Think it, it is it is a bit different. Like if you're working on a web comic and you just want to do something each week, but make sure that if it is something that would go on for a long time, is that there's a very consistent theme that would happen in uh, each scene or each page. But um, more than often, um, I would really recommend finding. Uh, you know, the project that you think could have a good beginning, middle, and end. So that's what I go with. Um, another thing that I could think of, too, is that for me as a writer, um, I want to make sure that I focus on the project that I am most excited about. So um, Get the good stuff. Yeah, yeah like the, sometimes I'll come home and I'll say to myself, oh, my God, I really want to write about this idea that I've got. Then do it right then. You know, start getting it out. Because if you're excited about it at that time... Don't save it for later. Yeah, yeah you can maintain <laughs> that excitement. Because, yeah. um, you know, if you let a project sit for too long and it start, starts to bum you out or you get lost, you know, I mean, you, you came up with it, but it's amazing how quickly you can start to forget yeah. those details. So. Keep, a, keep a notepad, keep a sketchbook. Um, 
I know when I was working, uh, you know, as a clerk, I kept a notebook in the back of my pocket because it was on hand all the time. And if I had something, I just, oh, got it, write it down. I won't forget about it later, you know, or the idea won't, like, go out of my mind. So, yeah. Other questions? Yeah. Uh, question about um, just showing your work at a convention. Um, do you think it's advisable to bring stuff that, yeah, you know, you could do a little bit better, but you're really just looking for that critical feedback? Sure. Um, do you think bringing that kind of work to conventions is so, so the question is, should you bring, you know, your work to a convention if you know you could maybe do a little bit better, but this is what you've got right now? Um, a lot of times people approach us mm -hmm. and say, hey, would you take a look at my stuff? Um, it is hard for us to provide um, useful feedback if we're not seeing the best of what you can do. Because if, you, if you're going, yeah, the inking on this thing is just, mm, but I feel like pretty good about you know, the structure of this. The first thing we'll probably say is, well, you know, it looks like you could maybe work on your inking. Here's some, here's some suggestions for us. So if you know that you're missing something, that's probably what we're going to you know, catch up with too. So I think just to get the most beneficial feedback, yeah. having you know, really your best examples of what, you, what you're working on, or the things that you feel the best about or that are most complete or whatever, you're going to get the most useful feedback. Yeah, of course. I mean, like you, if you want feedback on anything, of course, you can bring it to anyone around you. Um, for conventions, I know that a good number for like if you think you have your best pages or your best images, you want to keep maybe about like seven or so really good images that you're going to want to show off to people. Mm -hmm. um, if you're realistically, people aren't going to have a whole lot of time to look at much more yeah, than that anyway. If that's the other thing too. I mean, like think of uh, how you're showing this to people in general. How are you presenting it? Like if you have a portfolio, um, Definitely get a binder uh, with yeah. sleeves for your pages. And be organized with what it is. If right you've now. got a script, um, don't bring down like your handwritten notes. Like actually have something printed out with a title page. Um, maybe you just want to show them the synopsis um, or maybe an outline. And make um, sure that you've edited. Yes. Uh, oh, oh no! Oh, God. <laughs> Please edit your work. <laughs> yeah. Like make sure like. Do not bring in any spelling mistakes at all. Well, spelling, I mean, but if there's like grammatical and it's yeah. like you don't know how to do a, a, you know, a, a quote or whatever, it's like you gotta figure that stuff out before you show it off. Yeah. But yeah, I think any feedback that you can get, if that's what you've got at the time, that's all you've got ready and you wanna show it to people, that's cool. But, um, you know, yeah, figure, uh, figure you're gonna get the best feedback uh -huh. if you bring your best stuff. Yeah. And your work isn't always gonna be great, of course. I mean, no matter like how much like edits you do, and that's why you're bringing it yeah, to there in the first right. place. So. Yeah. Um, if you're an artist, are you um, generally just going to want to bring finished stuff or pencils, pencil and inks? So, yeah. Uh, so, we got to repeat yeah. the question here. I got it. So, yeah, the question was if you are an artist, like, do you want to bring um, more finished stuff or uh, pencils and inks? You know, it really depends. Um, like, if you want to be a pencil artist, you know, bring your pencils. Like, I would definitely recommend bringing different stages of artwork. Um, you know, if someone wants to see how you thumbnail, if someone wants to see how you make a consistent story with a comic book, um, you know, I mean, bring a two-page uh, comic book that you just, you know, mm, this could be a cool short story, so I'll do that. And this is what I like. This is, these are, I'm bringing out my influences in this. So, um, yeah, uh, bring your work in a lot of different stages. Definitely bring it in pencils, but they should be completed pencils like right before you would ink them. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, like sometimes we may, uh, if we're about to, if I'm gonna be inking something like immediately after, I might pencil different. But if I wanna show completed pencils, I wanna show them as pencils that would be inked by someone else. Um, because uh, that's gonna be, you know, that's how people are want, gonna wanna see it in the first place. So. And, and again, kind of touching back to this gentleman's point was that, you know, bring the stuff that you want the feedback about. Um, you know, if, it, if you want feedback about your completed seven-page seven scene, mm -hmm. then that's great. If you want feedback on your pencils, then, then bring those. All right. Any others? Really? Okay, so get the gentleman in the back and we'll come back again. Yeah, for sure. What's the best way to keep your characters from their What's the best, best way to get your characters from merging personalities? So one of, so uh, I was a high school English teacher, 
Um, and so I can give you, you know, some, some general writing advice that I think will help here. Read your stuff out loud yes. to yourself. Yeah. <laughs> and if your character has this personality that you want, then make sure that when you are hearing yourself say the lines that that character is going to say, make sure it sounds like that character. And not you. And not you. Yeah. <laughs> um, I would warn you against doing too much with like accents to you know differentiate people or worry about it for later. Yeah. Well, I know just in general because those can be overdone so easily. But you know, really try to think of your characters as living creatures. And sometimes it can be helpful to create, you know, maybe an outline of each of your characters, what their motivations are, what their life is like, what it is that, you know, what part of the story or how, how the part of the story they're in affects them. And if you kind of create them as a full, rounded person instead of just a two-dimensional character, um, they might start to kind of emerge as their own person and you might be able to, you know, use that to help you in your writing, mm -hmm. you'd say to yourself, you know what, that character wouldn't say that. That doesn't line up with their motivation. Um, it can be hard because, you know, you're one person writing, you know, 10, 15, 20 other people what they're saying. But I think if you read your stuff to yourself out loud, as if you're, you know, performing it, that'll help a lot. And then, you know, having um, a well-rounded understanding of your character's background and all their, you know, info, that'll help a whole lot too. We got time for one more question if anyone wants to. Yeah, well, this gentleman had the same idea. Oh, I was going to say, if you're kind of banging your head against the wall creatively, is it a good idea to bring your stuff to a convention to get some feedback on where you might be going? Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so if you're banging your head on the wall and you're feeling kind of stuck, we got is it a sign. good idea to uh, bring your. What? We, we got a stop sign. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, is it a good idea to bring your um, that stuff that you're stuck on to the convention? Yeah, absolutely. If that, you know, if you're hoping for feedback on that, um, I know we didn't catch a question over here, but we're happy to stick around outside to talk to people. Yep, for sure. Also, um, one thing we just want to say: thank you so much for for coming and, and hearing what we did today.